parts of my job is following up with our guests that have been on and it was about a year ago that we taped yeah. and and I was and we have Angela Walters here and I was telling Angela that when we're taping sometimes I'm more focused on the mechanics of the taping and I just screened your segment and it's awesome oh I can't wait to see it yeah so Angela tell us you know what have you been doing since we've taped you're gonna show us some work and I have some questions for you since I've watched the show that I wished I'd asked <laughs> Well, wow, it's amazing what difference a year makes. Um, in the last year, I've had two books come out. I've had my fabric, I have two fabric collections with Art Gallery Fabrics. At this point, I'm just hanging on and just trying to enjoy the ride. It's been a lot of fun for sure. And what are your books? Uh, Free Motion Quilting with Angela Walters, with, with the, or with Stash Publishing, and uh, in the studio with Angela Walters as well. Okay. Well, one of the things that you talked about on the show that I thought was really liberating was that when you, you're a long arm quilter, yes, and when you approach a surface, well, tell about your doodling. Is that the right word? Yeah, we could call it doodling. I think that's a really good, non-threatening way to, to call it. But I, I look at the quilt top as kind of a, a face. You know, there's different areas of the quilt that I want to enhance, and there's different parts that I can do that with, with um, different quilting designs. So for me, it's always fun to try to find the parts of the quilt that I really want the quilting to show, or other parts, you know, and, and work with the quilt top. Because I think the best quilting enhances the quilt top, doesn't overwhelm it. When mm -hmm. people see a quilt that I've done, I want them to see the quilt pattern first, but then just a split second later, see the quilting and say, oh, I want to get closer and see what that's all about. Well, so for people that haven't seen the show or the segment, I would recommend they watch it. But like if you have a background area, you do some sort of, let's say like lines and then you scoot into circles or how do you know what to butt up against each other? Because it's not like it's designated from space to space. Exactly. Well, it kind of helps that I get bored very easily. So quilting the same design over the whole quilt, just, you know, I, I kind of find it a little boring for myself. So changing up the quilting designs helps me make that a little bit more interesting for sure. Um, when it comes to actually transitioning from the design, sometimes there's a more methodical, thought-out process. You know, I think I want this up here and this down here. But other times, I'm just kind of going as I go. And I have found that when I am working with some designs, let's say a swirl or a circle, and I'm not sure they're going to kind of flow together, I might try to sketch it out first just to make sure that it's going to work. But for the most part, most designs just kind of flow nicely into each other. How many of those designs do you have in your repertoire? You know, I don't have as many as you would think. I have maybe 10 or 15 of my classic favorite designs, mm -hmm. and I just like to use them in different ways. So try to make the quilting un unexpected in the way that I'm using the designs. I don't really feel the need to come up with a brand new design for every quilt because really, I mean, quilting has been around right. a long, long time. So it's not like there's many left out there to have. Well, I have my go-tos, that's for sure. You know, I go to the more classics like feathers, cables, and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, move to the side so everybody can see what's behind you. When we were setting up, I, I go, what's that? And you said, that's all your customers' quilts. Yeah, well, actually, that's not all of them. Um, that's the quilts I need to do in the next couple weeks. Ah! <laughs> I have a lot of quilts to get caught up on. But no, um, my assistant helps and pulls out the quilts that I need to do next. And then on the wall, on the shelf, if you can see, that's where I keep all my personal quilts for when I'm teaching and traveling and, and have those for samples for the classes. So it's definitely nice eye candy for sure. So you do quilt for other people, and you're well known for that. Yes. And uh, winning ribbons. When somebody shows you their top, what kind of questions do you ask to get inside their brain to know how to approach the quilt? Absolutely. That's, it's very important because you want to, as a quilter, especially when I'm working with a customer, even if I love it, if they don't love it, then they're not going to you know, enjoy the quilt. So the first thing I ask is, what do you not like? You know, if you don't like feathers, I won't hate you. I don't understand <laughs> it, but, I, you know, it's, it's good to know that kind of thing. Um, but anytime anybody is standing at a quilt, whether it's their own or their customers, and they're not sure, you know, what to do, I always say, you know, ask yourself, what's the most important thing about this quilt? Is it the quilt pattern? Is it the fabric? Is, is it the fact that it's for a four-year-old little girl that's going to drag it everywhere? And then make the quilting enhance that. So I always try to ask myself, you know, what is the most important thing? And so if it is the quilt pattern, somebody, you know, hand appliqued, all these pieces on it, then I want to make sure that the quilting reflects that and enhances that by using designs that kind of pull that out. 
So that's kind of the process that I think of. That's good. And that's good for me. So when I go to my long armor, I can help me be more articulate. Now, you do design fabric. And on the show, you talked about pre-panels that you can get on, pre-printed panels that you can get on and practice your quilting on. And that's still available on your site, right? Yes. Um, you know, I think it's really important to practice quilting on a quilt top. Um, when you're practicing on a piece of fabric, you don't have the constraints of block or the, the seams that you're working with. But I find that a lot of people are understandably scared that they're going to ruin their quilt. Absolutely. So I, um, having a pre-printed panel gives you the whole block of a quilt experience without having to take the time to piece it. And that's actually with my first fabric line textures with Art Gallery Fabrics. And the panel is called the Right Angles Panel. And it's just um, one yard piece. It has a half coordinating print and half of a panel. So that a quilter could just fold it over and get right to quilting. Because don't we all know that's the funnest part anyway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess. <laughs> I like buying fabric. So speaking of buying fabric, uh, before we got started, you held up a little bundle of fabric. Yes, I'm so excited. This is my newest collection with Art Gallery. It's called Legacy, and um, there's stuff about it on my blog, but it's all inspired by my favorite machine quilting designs. Nice. Yeah, I mean, not literally, but you can kind of see, you know, the inspiration that comes out from there. And I named it Legacy because my husband's grandpa actually taught me how to quilt. And even though he's not, he's no longer with us. I named it Legacy in honor of the legacy that he gave to me by showing me how to make quilts. Well, speaking of that, do you have anything you can show us that has to do with being a quilt? Yes. Look at this. So every once in a while, I make a quilt for myself, oh. and they're small, right? Because that's <laughs> I like to piece as much as I like to quilt. Nice. So was that done on a long arm? It was, yeah. I will do, I will quilt on my sewing machine, smaller projects or class samples. But if I have a smaller project like this and I already have a quilt loaded, I can just throw that on the extra that's left over on the back and not have to load a separate piece. So that's how I get the little projects done. Nice. Well, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. I mean, looking at those quilts that you have to get done. Ay, 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 ay. What's the wait time? Oh, it depends. I'm, I'm actually kind of right now not taking new customers. I was just going to ask that. I, I, you know, well, you know, um, I want to get caught up. And then after the beginning of the year, start again. But um, I, it's hard because the busier I get, you know, the harder it is to quilt customer quilts. But I can't get away from that. Like, that's where all my inspiration comes from. Mm -hmm. And when I'm working on customer quilts, they're sending me quilts that I wouldn't normally make myself. So they're pushing me. I you know, that would be a challenge then, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I and I honestly I love it too much to let it go. So, you know, I figure once maybe when my arms give out, then I'll stop looking <laughs> for customers. But up until then, I'm definitely going to do it. <laughs> well, listen, you have a great day. Um, loved your segment, loved it, and of course for me, you know, you know, having quilted like when the dinosaurs started, <laughs> I no, I that is the one subject matter, the quilting design that you just can't get enough information about. And I think it's the part of the process that scares a lot of people. You know, my business is based on quilting for customers that don't want to quilt their stuff. But mm -hmm. I think that it's really fun. And I think anybody could do it for sure. Great. Well, have a great day. Thanks for having me. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.